Imagine a world where the ordinary suddenly becomes extraordinary, where the mundane transforms into a canvas of endless possibilities. A world much like the one we found ourselves in during the unprecedented era of the coronavirus pandemic. In those trying times as our lives were reshaped and our perspective shifted, we discovered hidden truths about ourselves and those around us. We unearthed resilience we never knew existed. We forged connections from a distance and we found strength in vulnerability. But what if I told you that within the confines of an entirely different realm behind razor wire fences and concrete walls, I discovered another treasure trove of insights that rival the revelations of a global crisis. An environment where the ordinary takes on a different shade of meaning and the extraordinary emerges from the most unprecedented corners. Welcome to a world within a world where life's canvas is painted with challenges and uncertainties beyond imagination. A world that for almost a decade and a half, 14 years, was my reality, federal prison. Now, before your mind conjures up images of cliched narratives and pop culture portrayals, allow me to share with you the untold discoveries that lay within those hidden spaces, specifically how I developed being a leader. A leader, you might say. How can you quite possibly develop being a leader in federal prison? I'm glad that you asked the question because I have the answer for you. Allow me to illustrate this with a personal experience, if you will. In a prison basketball game, I remember, between two rival teams, one representing New York, the other Washington, D.C., uh, the excitement was palpable inside of the gymnasium. The stakes were high, competition was fierce, and passions ran deep. But within this seemingly trivial uh, or typical game, I should say, a moment of intensity emerged, a hard foul that threatened to es escalate into something more profound. This scenario mirrored uh, the clashes of emotions you often see in professional and or amateur basketball games at the park and or on television. However, in the unforgiving prison environment, disputes are never isolated. Every conflict, has the potential to trigger a chain of reaction impacting the intricate web of relationships within the prison population. Just like that hard file could have led to something more significant, disagreements in prison often reverberate beyond the individuals involved, sparking tensions and conflict amongst larger groups. The consequences could have escalated into factional disputes or even more serious outcomes, however, that didn't happen. More on that later on. Because I was able to facilitate classes within the facility, it allowed me to build relationships founded on trust, respect, and neutrality. Moreover, sharing a six-person cell with the two individuals involved in the dispute aforementioned, I was able to mentor the, uh, I should say mediate the situation in a way that could have, could have otherwise turned critical and or deadly, but it didn't happen. In this moment, through empathetic li listening, I discovered a way to prevent harm. Despite not being Secretary of State, I managed to keep two individuals with short sentences from hurting each other. This experience, among others, gave me invaluable insights into leadership, communication, and conflict resolution. I drew upon these lessons when the opportunity arose, both within prison walls and beyond. The principles that guided my interactions within this microcosm of society, diplomacy, empathy, and a commitment to understanding were relevant within the prison walls and have broader applications in the outside world in the eight plus years that I have been home. Now, what does this have to do with leadership? I'm glad that you asked that question. Let's define, define what leadership is. Leadership doesn't solely mean being a boss. It doesn't mean being in charge. I hope my mother is watching so that she can actually get this particular uh, meaning. Uh, or it doesn't even mean being in control. The typical associations we assign to leadership. While my leadership has, may have involved having learned some of those roles and responsibilities, but leadership at its core is really about influence. 
Leadership means really being good at helping people work towards reaching their goals. It's like a great team captain who makes sure, who makes sure everyone knows what to do, communicates with each other, and uses everyone's strengths to do good and make great things happen. Now look, I've had the benefit of being in senior positions while working for some of pop culture's biggest icons and most masterminds in business. From collaborating with two presidential administrations to working alongside social entrepreneurs and philanthropists such as Van Jones to business magnate Jay-Z at an organization that he co-founded. Uh, my good friend Oprah told me not to be a name dropper, so I won't mention anybody else. However, however, some of these principles and, 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 uh, uh, and values that I've learned while I, was in uh, while I was in prison, they're transferable to what I've been able to apply in business. I've been able to lead and support advocacy that led to passing 30 legislative, legislative bills, including an improbable federal one signed into law in 2018 by President Trump called the First Step Act. I have been able to create a pathway to freedom for more than 650,000 people who have been just as impacted. I have been able to secure the pardons of more than 100 people, both on the state and federal level. So I know a little bit about what leadership is. Now, the leadership that I cultivated while in prison were one of several things, and I'm going to talk to you about them right now. I'm going to give you five leadership principles of how to unlock your own particular leadership. Principle number one, adaptability and resilience. During my time in prison, I learned firsthand that the importance of adaptability. The environment was far from predictable and, and the circumstances could change rapidly. For instance, the resources available for certain common tasks, like baking in an oven or uh, as opposed to a microwave, might be limited or unexpected issues could arise that require quick thinking. To succeed, I had to swiftly adjust my approach, reevaluate my strategies and find new ways to achieve my objectives. This adaptability didn't just help me survive, but it taught me the value of embracing change and using it to my advantage. Now, in my corporate role, I apply these lessons learned by uh, the aforementioned, encouraging my team to stay open to new ideas, swiftly pivoting when needed, and seeing change as an opportunity for growth. Now, let's talk about resilience. Facing adversity in prison, I had no choice but to build resi resilience. My father used to say, you got the resiliency of a spring in a ballpoint pen. The challenges I encountered, whether personal or environmental, tested my limits, but I never lost sight of my long-term goals. For instance, when setbacks like a lockdown, denial of an early release motion, or something else threatened to derail my progress, I drew strength from within and I persevered. This, resilient, this resilience wasn't just about bouncing back from difficulties, it was about growing stronger within each challenge I overcame. In the corporate world, I carry this less life lesson with me. When a project encounters unexpected hurdles or when setbacks occur, I don't let them define my path. Instead, I draw upon my experience to motivate my team and show them that setbacks are opportunities for learning and growth. By staying resilient, I lead by example and inspire those around me to stay focused on our collective objective. Point number two, mastering the art of communication across diverse groups. Clearly articulating ideas and strategies, whether it was to other people who were incarcerated or to colleagues, it's essential in being a leader. Allow me to illustrate this with two examples, one from my time in prison and another one from my corporate experience. During my years in prison, I led workshops with people from diverse backgrounds, ethnically, culturally, et cetera. To truly connect and collaborate, I had to adapt my communication style to ensure that my message resonated with each person in the room. I learned that effective communication isn't about words, it's about creating a safe place where everyone feels valued and understood. By encouraging open dialogue and using relatable examples, I was able to bridge divides and build trust among diverse group of people who are incarcerated. Fast forward to my corporate role. I'm often tasked with presenting complex strategies to a team compromise of members from different departments, each with their own expertise. To assure alignment and understanding, I understand that clarity is key. I often break down strategies into easily understandable components, 
using visual aids to illustrate key concepts, explaining why we are doing things, and then moving those things along. Point number three, empathy and understanding. I remember a person by whose name is Carlos. Carlos and I, we were in the same unit for about four years or so. We never spoke to each other because when you're in federal prison, there are certain people that you don't necessarily fraternize with. Carlos was from Mexico. And Carlos, through a misunderstanding, found himself in secure housing unit. Well, my advocacy chops didn't uh, produce when I was released from incarceration, I used to organize while I was incarcerated. If they went up 15 cent on a honey bun, I was in front of commissary protesting. And so I found myself in special housing unit as well, along with Carlos. While we were cellies, while we were roommates in special housing unit, I come to find out that Carlos was incarcerated on a five-year prison sentence because he re-entered the United States of America after having been deported. As I listened to his story and understood the circumstances that led him to prison, we connected a bond with one another. And through empathy, I grasped his struggles, his fears and dreams, bridging a gap that once seemed unbridgeable. This experience highlights that empathy isn't just a sentiment. It's a catalyst for meaningful relationships and mutual understanding. Empathy, however, isn't confined to prison walls. It actually reaches far beyond people who are incarcerated. Point number four, problem solving. There is no place that you need to exercise creativity in problem solving like when you are incarcerated. <laughs> Baby mama don't come see you, you need to problem solve. <laughs> Children acting up, you need to problem solve. When there's an issue within the institution, when there are factions who aren't necessarily agreeing with one another, you need to problem solve problem-solving skills that I learned while incarcerated were transferable into my corporate role to allow me to ascend and elevate to the level of executive leadership where I am now. Last but not least, conflict resolution. In the prison environment where conflict is an inescapable reality, whether it rises with correctional officers or others doing time, you are bound to encounter issues, no matter how seemingly insignificant. Your ability to effectively resolve conflicts becomes paramount to navigating your time behind bars. It's a skill that not only shapes your experience, but also influences the trajectory of your journey within the confines of that correctional institution. This experience and others like it provided a unique vantage point into the art of managing interpersonal dynamics. The lessons learned in diffusing conflicts in such high stakes and environments like the basketball situation I told you about have proven transferable into the real world. In my professional roles where conflict arises, whether they involve colleagues, partners, clients, and or family, I have been able to diffuse situations. Here too, my capacity to navigate differences foster open conversations and guide parties towards collaborative, collaborative solutions that are invaluable. I want to leave you with something. The power of production, I promise you, will allow you to edit, uh, us to edit this. As I conclude this journey, I want to leave you with something. When you walk through the corridors of my experiences and insights, I'm reminded of the tr tremendous potential that lies within each and every one of us. The stories I've shared, the lessons I've learned, and the principles I've discussed are not confined to the boundaries of prison walls or corporate boardrooms. They transcend those limitations, reaching out to touch every corner of our lives. My hope, my sincere aspiration is for a world where leadership is not just the privilege of a select few, but a beacon that shines brightly in all four corners of society. A world where we recognize leadership, not solely by titles, but by the impact that we have on one another. One of the things that my grandmama used to say, and my grandmama was the brightest, sharpest, most profound person that I know. She led with love, she led with empathy, she led with adaptability, she led with resilience, but more importantly, she led with her heart. 
And she used to always tell me, if you're going to be a real leader, you have to understand that right on the other side of opposition is opportunity. 14 years in federal prison facilitated opposition so that I can get to leadership opportunity. Thank you.